Firestorm has only been out for a few days now, but already players are starting to get to grips with the mode and are learning the best strategies for success. A big shout out to EA for sponsoring this video. I've decided to create a top 10 list of tips and tricks that you can use to be successful in Firestorm and hopefully things that will lead you to a V for victory. The first tip, arguably the biggest way that Firestorm sets itself apart from the Battle Royale competition, is destruction. You should be using it. Buildings, walls, little huts, and even vehicles can be destroyed here, and the tools that you need are all there for you as you loot up. Destruction forces not only your enemies to be much more aware of your surroundings and just how solid your surroundings are, but you need to be aware of that yourself. If you do find yourself in a house and you hear footsteps outside, you might be best to prepare yourself for what's coming next. And speaking of footsteps, tip number two is all about audio. Battlefield 5 has some great built-in audio features that help you customise the soundscape that you can hear. But for Firestorm, it's more important than ever that you have a pair of headphones plugged in so that you can hear every single little detail. I'm currently using the war tape setting, which massively compresses the audio and makes different sounds all a similar volume. This means I can hear footsteps much more clearly against ambient noise, which has already had a huge impact on the way my matches have played out. This clip here shows me taking down one player who damaged me off in the distance and then pushed up, but the other player I hadn't heard until the last few seconds. Because my audio setup was on point, I was able to hear his footsteps and managed to take him down as well. 3D headphones is another really good setting to use. This creates a good directional audio system for you, no matter what pair of headphones you might be wearing. Tip number three is all about managing your inventory. Once you hit the ground, you know what you're supposed to do. Go and find some loot. Whatever it is, equip it and hope you're the one who gets to shoot first. In Firestorm, you get two slots for primary weapons and an additional slot for a secondary pistol. So in total, you can carry three firearms at any one time. The inventory to the bottom right of the screen will expand as you collect more items. That allows you to switch gadgets as well. You can move items in and out of active positions that are assigned to different buttons on your controller or keyboard and its capacity can be expanded in size by finding larger backpacks around the world. Six different types of ammunition are always shown on the inventory on the screen. Loot comes in green, blue, purple and gold rarities and is denoted as such in the inventory for you. I really like the fact that Criterion has gone for an inventory system that doesn't cover up the entirety of your screen when you're using it. It expands and contracts in that right corner as you interact with it and leaves your screen clear to keep a lookout for enemies. It's a nice fresh take on managing your gear. Now, tip number four is somewhat linked to tip number three. This one surrounds looting and the rarities of different items that you can find. Currently, Firestorm lets you pick up loot directly off the ground, when looting for gear or when you kill an enemy and you go and secure what they had. Loot comes in four different rarity levels, common green, rare blue, epic purple and legendary gold. Weapons fall into the first three rarities, with the higher the rarity correlating to the type of specialisations it has active and what kind of optics it has. A common green weapon is stock, no specialisations and it just uses iron sights. A rare weapon will have a short range optic attached and two lower level specialisations and an epic weapon will have a longer range optic option and two higher level specialisations. Gadgets and supplies are also denoted different item rarities, with things like the healing syringe being common, the armour plates being rare, and the artillery strike flare gun being epic. Currently only one legendary gold item exists in Firestorm, and that is the V1 rocket. Obviously some devastating power when used correctly. Tip number five is all about where you can find the best loot. There are several ways to obtain loot in Firestorm, but looking out for strong boxes, safes, supply drops and objectives are the best ways to up the chances of you finding that high tier loot. 
Now, strong boxes, they're scattered all over the Halvoy map, and they drop loot in all different types of rarities. They're orange, and they're emblazoned with the Sullis logo. Safes can be found in more high-profile, named locations. These do take some time to open, you have to unlock the thing, but they guarantee rare and epic loot drops. Be aware though, as you're opening it, you must interact with it all the way to its completion, or you have to start again, so there's a bit of risk and reward here. Supply drops are randomly dropped from the Great Plane in the sky, and will show their position with a green flare on the ground. They also have a higher chance of dropping rare and epic loot, so if you see one, maybe head over and find out what's happening. And the objective locations, these guys are your big hitters. You can locate these by looking on the map, and if you're able to secure an objective for yourself or for your squad, plenty of loot is going to drop out at the base of the large balloon. Be aware, however, objectives are visible to all players on the map, so you might end up with some unwanted attention. For tip number six, let's quickly touch on health and armor. In Firestorm, the health pool you have is larger than the base game, and you also have access to an armor system which can further protect you in gunfights. You'll start with 150 health in Firestorm, and you have the option to apply up to 150 armor on top of that. Healing is super simple, collect healing syringes as you loot up, you can carry a maximum of 8, and apply them if you take damage. There's a short little animation as you apply them. Armour is applied by sliding in armour plates into your vest, which when you first start a match, only has one slot. However, as you loot up, you'll come across rare and epic vests. Those will give you access to 2 and 3 slots respectively. If armor plates are damaged in your vest, you can swap them out for fresh ones as you find them, but you can also carry spares in your inventory as well. A fully healed and armored player can take 300 damage before being killed in solos or knocked down in squads. If you are knocked down in squads, you have another 150 health in the down state that an enemy needs to deal with before you're permanently killed. You can be revived in this down state, however, and you can move about, so if there's a chance you can take some cover, make sure you take it. Number seven on the list, make sure you're considering your soldier's look. The characters you can choose to play as in Firestorm, they mirror the characters you've created in your company. In the staging area, you can choose any of your soldiers from either faction, and you can spawn in with them, but it is worth considering whether you want to stick out like a sore thumb in your big red overcoat, or perhaps you'd like a nice camoed green ensemble instead. Make some changes, or not if you don't want to, in your company before you matchmake into Firestorm, so you've always got the options that you want to use. Tip number eight for you, make sure you're familiar with as many of the locations on the Halvoy map as you can be, because the Ring of Fire starts on the map as the match starts. This means sometimes it will already have cut off certain places that you might have wanted to have dropped into. Being familiar with all parts of the map will give you an upper hand, so though it might feel safer to drop in just a few places and learn those inside out, spread out a bit more and get some more map knowledge up in your noggin. Tip number nine on the list, vehicles. Yes, tanks are scary if you're not the one in them, but be aware that they have limited fuel. All vehicles in this game have limited fuel. This means they can only go so far before a player will have to get out and put more fuel in it, or get out completely because they don't have any extra fuel. It's important you carry some anti-vehicle weaponry like Panzerfaust or Dynamite, but don't feel compelled to charge right into those vehicles and engage them straight away. Sometimes it's worth hanging back a little bit and tailing them first of all. Vehicle lockups are the places to go if you want a big heavy vehicle, if you're that way inclined. Use the two large wheels outside the bunker to open the doors. And lastly, number 10, of course, don't get caught in the fire. Not only does the Ring of Fire start hurting you if it consumes you, but it also emits a lot of noise as well, and it's very difficult to see through back into the safe zone. Get caught out of it, and audio visuals become a big problem. Firestorm isn't like other Battle Royale games where you can use the storm to your advantage. Here, you just need to avoid it at all costs. 
So there you are then, 10 tips for Firestorm. I really hope these tips help you out and get you a step closer to your first V for victory. If you did find them helpful, drop this video a like, and if there's anything you think I missed, drop some comments down below so we can all learn together and get better at Firestorm. But until next time, my name is Westy, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.